Welcome back everyone to Astian's Let's Play of Wild Arms Alter Code F on El Tyra's YouTube channel. Where we last left off, I brought us back to Rosetta Town uh, because we had just completed Volcanon Trap, I believe. And we saw a scene where Boomerang took the place of... Uh, what was his name? Berserk, that's right. He took the place of Berserk in the Coordinates, much to the... Uh, Disappointment of Siegfried and the other coordinates who don't feel that Boomerang is appropriate, but Mother had other plans. They also uh, activated the Sedalita, Soldalita, I believe, which is a shield that now protects the photosphere. But our party doesn't know about that, so as far as we know, we next need to go to either, either Giant's Cradle or Court CM. I did a quick bit of exploring. Uh, we can't actually access Court CM from the inner sea, so the next location that we'll go to will be Giant's Cradle. But just before we begin, I will let you know that in the inner sea, I did find an altar part southwest of Giant's Cradle uh, on some land. Um, Jack's now level 28, Rudy's level 29, and Cecilia's 28. Before we head over to... I can hear those birds outside. I hope you guys can't. Before we head over to Vulcan and Trap, what I want to do... Before we head over, what an idiot. That's where I want to go. Before we head over to Giant's Cradle, I want to go to Vulcan and Trap. But I also believe that there's something that you can get. Where is it though? There's something you can get in. I remember reading that there's something that you can get in here somewhere. Where is it? There's something that I'm missing in. I've already read that. There's something that we're missing in Rosetta Town, so I want to figure out what it was. I can't remember. Like, I read it, and I'm like, oh, I need to go back and look. Maybe it was in the armor shop. Just going to quickly double check everything. It was like a hole that Pan Pan could run into or something, I believe. I've just... I don't think it was the mayor's house. I don't know. I don't know what it was. If you guys uh, know, as always, if you find anything or you know of anything that I've missed, uh, please let me know because it does help me out a lot uh, with you guys giving me hints. Obviously, I don't want spoilers, but if you know of something that I've... Did I even go in this? Did I go into this house? Yeah, I did. I remember. Maybe it was the... No, it wasn't the mayor's house. I think the mayor's house is the only one left in this town. It's that one. Yeah, I've got no idea. I can't remember. If you guys know what it was, then please let me know. What I'll do is I will stop the camera here, and we will resume in Volcano Trap. So one moment. Welcome back, guys. Uh, if you will remember... When we were doing Volcano Trap earlier, Jane and Magdalene found a duplicator key, uh, which we uh, found a chest for when we were playing as this party on this side. So we're going to just quickly go back to that chest and open it. And I just remembered we actually do need to go back to Rosetta because I forgot to do something. Aren't I clever? Uh, I forgot to buy which episode for. Strong, magic has, strong magics have sealed it shut. So let's open it with the duplicator that we've got. Oh my god, this stupid... That's better. What's in it? I think it's a PS skill, maybe. Regeneration? What does that do? Uh, re as FP rises, HP is restored. Wow! And it only costs... Oh, it costs six. That might be... I don't know who that would be good on, actually. Anyway, I will uh, resume with you again back in Rosetta. So, uh, one moment, guys. Alright, guys. Sorry to waste your time and bring you back here again. But we did need to go back and get the witch episode. Because I did end up getting enough money to get it. So, let's get this. We only need one, and that's all that he has anyway. And now that we've got that, I will resume with you at the Kurin Abbey because you know what that means. See you soon, guys.
Alright guys, and we're back. Oh my god, I was just looking through that Kurin Abbey to try and find a way to heal myself. So I was pretty sure that you could eat the chow mein here from the cook for free. But it looks like he doesn't give you that option anymore. So unfortunately, I'll have to go back to an inn prior to heading to Giant's Cradle. So I'll probably use the ship graveyard because it seems to be uh, opposite where the Giant's Cradle is. Anyway, let's uh, use our book. Oh, we have a tool shop too. We need to take that to Adelheid. We'll go to Adelheid next. Well, that book. May I take a look at it? Okay. Thank you. I'll read it to you now. If you get tired, let me know by pressing the start button. Here we go, guys. As we walked along the riverside, which was lined with old statues, the big city appeared. The city, with brick walls to protect from enemy attacks, looked elaborate. You can sense people's excitement, yes? The road we're on ran through the centre of the city. Aishi indicated all the festive tents in the distance that lined the streets. Since Passover is coming, markets are open. People want decorations for the festival and come here from surrounding villages. It looks interested. I think so too. I'm excited. No. Our words were denied instantly. You should not interact with this world or its people unless necessary. Wait outside of the city while I look for a place to stay for the night. I understand. I shrugged my shoulders at Luri's words. Luri headed off while Aishi and I went down to the dry riverbank. There was a hut and a lone girl far downstream, but no one else, so we had the stream to ourselves. It's a fine day to lie down in the grass. The girl had long blonde hair tied back behind her. She was by the side of the road, diligently watering the statue of a god. That is a statue made of primitive mud. Aishi had followed my eyes. I can tell it's an old god. I reached my arm out and brushed dandelions off my face. The wind carried the sound of the blonde girl's voice. I wish people in this city misfortune. I hope to leave this city someday. Whoa. I knitted my brows at her earnest yet unfavourable tone. I saw her finish praying and enter the shabby riverside hut. My heart was saddened. Hey, Kane. Aisha's voice pulled me back to reality. Do you think we could go for a little? Of course we shouldn't. We talk without looking at each other. There are so many people in town, so I think it'll be hard to find a place to stay. Luri won't be back for a while, right? Aishi was probably right. But I knew I should deny it firmly. Kane, she stood up impatiently. Just a little bit. Let's just stretch our legs. I promise it'll only be for a little bit. You promise? Aisha's face brightened at my words. Hmm. Yes, I absolutely promise. You promised. We don't even have any money, so we can't buy anything, you know. Aishi was blue for just a moment. Okay, that's fair, she said firmly and admirably. Okay, Aishi, don't get lost in this crowd. I took Aishi's hand and entered the city. Oh, is that what we look like? And that's what Aishi looks like. There were various stalls set up and there was the pungent smell of spices that pervaded the whole street. There were stalls selling festival ornaments that looked like little gods, but also stalls for the necessities of life, weapons, and even antiques. Hey look, look at that! Aishi was so excited and every time she found something new she pointed it out. Yum, that looks good. The lively atmosphere put my heart at ease. Although when people stared at us or whispered to their companions, I felt a little uncomfortable. We stuck out in the crowd. A girl of the people of Pillar and a guy wearing unfamiliar clothes would attract people's attention. We had walked for a while when Aishi stopped in front of a glassworks stall. It's beautiful. She took a glass cut in her hands, muttering, Yes, it is. Golden sunshine fell down on the tents, which cast sturdy shadows for their merchants. It's okay to look, but don't break it. We nodded at the craftsman. Look, look, this is pretty too. Aishi took a glass spell and wrung it a little. Please, be careful, Aishi. Don't treat me like a child. She puffed out her cheeks. But you are a child. I swallowed down the words and looked over the items on the table. Huh? There was a metal cylinder in the corner. By any chance? I took it in my hands. Without a doubt, it was a kaleidoscope. What's that? Aishi cocked her head to one side. Look through this hole. I pointed at the lens. Okay. Aishi looked through as instructed and her mouth dropped open. Without a word, she rotated the cylinder. 
At her fascination, the craftsman and I looked at each other and laughed. It's amazing, she said after a while. As she looked up at me. Young lady, you want to see others too? When the craftsman spoke to her, as she nodded with a smile on her face. My recommendation is this one. As she looked into the cylinder, which had patterns of a rambling rose etched on it. Wow, it's completely different. Depending on the material of the cylinder, the views are different. I see. Aishi was obviously fascinated and taken in with all her heart. You want me to buy it for you? I said the words involuntarily. But do you have any money? I think I can do something. I touched my pocket and winked at her. Oh, that's awfully suggestive. But only one. Yeah, yes, but pick your favourite. I walked away from the stall. I headed for an antique shop that I had noticed earlier. The stall had an old coin collection and would probably buy the coins in my pocket. I started to walk cheerfully, intoxicated with the great idea. You should not interact with this world. I had forgotten Louis's words completely. Even before I had walked 20 steps from the glassware stall, a familiar voice echoed. You look happy, Kane. I heard Kanaya Ruder's voice behind me. What do you want from me? I touched my sword and turned. Her snake-like hands reached towards me with a sexy smile. How are you going to buy trinkets here? I shrugged my shoulders. It's none of your business. My reply was excessively curt, which Kana Kanaruda found extremely amusing. She started to laugh. Though you are cute, you are foolish. The reason I ask is because I've dealt with that in the past. What do you mean? She smiled at me. I prophesize that this world will never give you what you wish for. I could smell orchids. Is that all you wanted to say? I was irritated by her tone and drew near her with a low voice, though I know that she was not the type of person who was intimidated. Actually, I came here to give you this. She took some small coins from her pocket and placed them in my clenched hand. This is so you will not bring coins from a different period to this world. My eyes widened. What is this? I couldn't understand why a rule breaker who stood in direct opposition to Luri would say the same thing she did. Kanairuda seemed satisfied with my reaction, though she smiled like a satisfied cat. Sell those coins for the girl of the tribe that was sacrificed by the Holy King. Show her a good time. And she disappeared from my sight. I gazed at those coins that she left. I don't want to damage this period, but I didn't trust Kanairuda either. I'm bad at a thing like this. I realised that I was longing for my past, when I could end things with violence. After a long moment, I brought Kanaruda's coins to the second-hand store. These are not extremely rare articles, I would say they are about 150 geller. I was surprised at the amount of cash I received. I traced my path back, and when I was near the glassware store, Aishi ran towards me. Where did you go? Her worried face looked up at me, her honest expression eased my tension. Well, it was a little bit of a walk. Did you decide on a kaleidoscope? She nodded and pointed out the kaleidoscope inlaid with the rambling rose. I paid the amount the craftsman told me and passed the kaleidoscope to Aishi. Thank you. I'm really happy. That's good. I patted Aishi's head, who was beaming and headed towards the exit of the bazaar. Since Lurie was not back yet, we bought orange juice with the remaining gala and sat down on the dry riverside. I smelled glass and clear water. It's a beautiful day to take a nap. It's cold. Still holding the kaleidoscope in her hand, Aishi dipped her legs in the stream. I smiled at her. The accessories on her legs made tinkling sounds in the water. Was this what having a younger sister was like? No, young no. Younger sisters are naughty girls who quibble and fight with their older brothers. While I was thinking that funny thought, Aishi pulled my sleeve. What? It's very beautiful. Look at this. Aishi passed me the kaleidoscope. Okay, okay. I received the kaleidoscope and looked. That guy does a great job. Involuntarily, I sighed. Glass beads of various colours with intricate patterns. Yes, it's fantastic. I nodded to Aishi and returned it to her. Aishi looked into it again. The glass beads in the cylinder clinked. Oh, it just showed a pattern like flowers. The one I saw was good too. It was like beautiful fireworks. Really, I want to see it too. Aishi looked up from the cylinder. It shows random patterns when you move it, so you can't force the same picture twice, I explained. She lowered her eyes regretfully. But there are an infinite number of beautiful sights contained inside that small cylinder. Isn't that amazing? You say nice things. My father used to tell me things like that. Aishi smiled happily. You must really miss your family. I said it unintentionally, and her face clouded. Yes, I am proud of myself, and proud of all people of Pillar. Huh? 
my eyebrows knitted in confusion. All people of Pella are family. Because of it, we are not supposed to be separated from each other. I don't like being away from them. That's why you wanted to come with us. Aishi nodded and looked up at the sky. We people of Pella lost our village because the Holy King built a shrine upon the lay point near our village. The adults of Pillar moved to the land the Holy King had prepared for them. I was taken to Kurin Abbey. Oh, so it's set in our world. I see. It was an obvious isolation policy. You don't like the Abbey? Aishi pouted her mouth and kicked her legs in the stream. No, everyone was nice, but I was only taught quest sorcery. I thought I might forget summon magic. I see, I replied, not knowing what else to say. Aishi glanced at me and sipped her orange juice. I could do nothing but sip my own orange juice. The orange juice, though, tepid, had a sweet taste. Kane, Aishi, Lurie's voice boomed. We are coming. Aishi stood up and shook her toes to dry them and put on her shoes. As we walked up the bank, I said, Aishi. She smiled at the sound of her name. Did it hold some special meaning for her? The kaleidoscope's our little secret, okay? Yes. We nodded to each other with a smile. Oh, that was kind of cute. I like that. Huh? What? Oh, okay, we'll stop here. These books are really good. Well, that one was better than the last one. Anyway, guys, I'll pause the camera again and we'll resume in Edelheid. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, guys, welcome back to Edelheid. And what we're going to do is go and give Tom this tool shop. And that should hopefully restore that building. Wait, is that a model of a tool shop? With the model of a tool shop and 2,500 Gela, I can completely restore the tool shop. How about it? Yes. All right, leave this to me. I will do a better job than anybody. So you have to actually go outside of town and fight in, I think, five battles. Yeah. I don't really have enough. Oh, four battles, actually. I don't really have enough to uh, give to the town restoration project. And I tried to stay here at the inn, and I can't because it's locked. Because um, it's the building's still broken and we can't stay at the castle anymore so I'm going to go back to ship graveyard and I'll resume with you outside of giant's cradle so I'll see you in one sec guys all right guys here we are outside giant's cradle so as you can see it's in the north northern part of the world so just uh up there I'll just highlight it for you there we go and uh well let's enter I guess I haven't been here yet so this will be interesting Oh, the other interesting point that I wanted to make is that this game has the red malice and the blue virtue, obviously. But the blue virtue in the original title is actually obtained from a dungeon called Tri-Pillar rather than off the ghost ship. Blue virtue and red malice, then the door will be opened. Okay, well let's uh, hand over these special items. And we can enter now. I wonder how big this dungeon is. Oh. Oh, is that another golem? A golem? There was one still hidden? This is one of the eight. Yes, it must be a golem. This was a weapon that battled monsters. But what are we going to do with this thing? We can't do anything with this huge thing. I know. I know, but can't we make it work somehow? If this enormous power became ours, it would be great against the monsters. Are you saying we should wake him? Wake him up again for battle? Is the golem's only purpose to fight? To desire its existence for only one purpose? It's too sad. Princess, a sword is made to slay the enemy, and a spear is made to stab the enemy. This golem's purpose was no different. Your tenderness is a very precious thing in this world, but because the world is like this right now, the possibility has to be indulged. Unfortunately, it's a fact that we do not have room for weakness. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to say... No, I'm sorry too. Either way, this is too much for us. We should ask that doctor for help. She's a bit strange, but she could probably help us with this. Yes, Dr. Emma in Edelheid. You're right, Dr. Emma should be able to help. All right then, let's go get her. Oh, we were just there, are you kidding me? Maybe on the way back, 
I might fight those battles that I need to get the tool shop fixed. If everything has allowed existence for only one purpose, then I'm only accepted as a princess, but not as myself. I'm sorry. Let's go. Everyone is waiting. She's still stuck in that internal struggle that she's having about her own personal identity. Hopefully when this mission's all finished, she'll realise that she can be accepted as more than than just the Princess of Edelhide. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. This has been Astin on Altaris YouTube channel taking you on a let's play of Wild Arms Alter Code F. When we return, we will uh, be back in Edelhide. Uh, probably better to resume the camera there. And uh, we will go and approach Dr. Emma and see if this will motivate her to get out of her dump. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like, subscribe, favorite and or share as it helps me out immensely. Thanks again and I will see you next time. Cheers.